Namaste. Welcome to another spiritual lecture. Tonight's topic is contradiction. Now, I thought this was a good topic to touch on because it's something that is constantly in place. It is rarely thought of something affable, but if you just bear with me, I'll soon explain how contradiction could be considered affable. Now, if we think of sibling words and phrases like peas and carrots we think of two people whose bonds are so strong that they are rarely apart or we think of two things which go together so well that uh, one is inferior if uh, one is not accompanied with the other also if we think of chalk and cheese we think of two personalities who constantly clash and they could clash because they have different opinions but they could have uh, different opinions towards the same goal uh, and they could have uh, different opinions about what a thing is or how something should be used. And now, I believe religion to be romantic and politics to be amusing, irrespective of the dogma attached to both schools. Now, religion and politics are both theories of idealism. They are both supposedly in place to offer solutions. Now, the irony being with nations at war over the past, evidence suggests politics and religion to be a problem as opposed to the solution. Now, progressive as technology of the 21st century is, power is still limited. Now, I believe this to be a blessing because in a Zen-like manner, we discover that less is more. So, if we're doing uh, a particular activity, we shouldn't also be uh, so fixated on the intricacy of the technique but sometimes do it something more simple can be more effective and benefit uh, the modern thought a lot more. So also uh, the blessing of technology being limited is it hopefully teaches the younger generation to be uh, more spiritually fulfilled and find fulfilment beyond materialism, finance and uh, constantly trying to be uh, top of the league in whatever they do. Now, if we do something and we do it wrong, we're not necessarily cheating. Uh, we should uh, put everything down to experience. So if we do something wrong, we remember how we can improve the next time we do it. Now, how I believe contradiction to be affable is if we take examples of teachings from the Buddha and Confucius, with both their writings, there is an overtone of humour that aligns uh, a contradict of nature that uh, uh, separates sentence to sentence. Now, they have this ethos that all we need to do to remember is how to forget and basically not be absorbed in banal aspects of life. And that is what is uh, affable. So we could have, we could consider a uh, contradiction to be the sacred law that provides a sense of balance uh, and we aren't strongly in favour of one thing staunchly against each other because that's uh, how sectarianism can come around. Uh, so if we engage in an expressive art we are creating a religion within the realms of the self so whether it's music, 
creative writing, cooking, we're taking uh, all the skills required for these creations and we're putting our own slant on it and hopefully someone can uh, indulge and relate to what we're doing thinking yeah I'm going through a dark phase but this has given me the strength to carry on so I suppose arts could be considered uh, metaphorical prayers in the sense that uh, a positive or negative emotion has been expressed and could inspire others uh, to carry on. Now, uh, as far as the literal arts go, or the art of English literature, would I just like to sound off by reading uh, a poem, which is or an extract from a poem uh, by Ted Hughes. This is from the Thought Fox. I imagine. The midnight moments forest. Something else is alive beside clock's loneliness and the blank page where my fingers move. So, my synopsis of that said piece of prose is you're alone in a literal sense. You're feeling lonely. You're unhappy about it. So, you're maybe not as evolved as a hermit where you can be comfortable in isolation but the silver lining being there could be someone not too far down the street in a similar situation and uh, there's always this sense that there could be happy, happy accident that two part two people basically combine and often that is how love and friendship evolves uh, it's the accidental meeting uh, and accepting that uh, there is a force superior to uh, humans and that's God and the cosmos therefore there is limits to what we can uh, physically plan because there is a superior force who has something installed for all of us and this could also lend itself to synchronicity. Carl Gustav Jung uh, described what he coined as synchronicity to be a theory of coincidence where two uh, people or two things are happening in se separate places at the same time and through trial and error uh, bonds are formed to create a singular entity. And again, that is where contradiction plays a part and can be an equal blessing or curse. Namaste. Thank you for listening. Good night.